Hello, fans. It's the special edition Wednesday version of Let's Talk Chicago Bears. Well, talking about the playoffs is just not something we're going to do, okay? So um, we are going to, um, this special edition is um, all about pace and and just some of the stuff he's done. I, I'm not re I can't get into everything because I'd be on the air for the rest of the day. So I just pointed out a few things that um that that he has done since he's been here. So let's talk about him. And at the and when I'm done basically is it's time for him to go. He has um out well welcomed his welcome. Is that right? No. Out welcomed his stay. <laughs> <laughs> told you pickled okay you got to give me a little chance all right so pace was hired um in 2015 so he's had five drafts five drafts and his record his current record is 39 and 52 with one playoff appearance and loss that's not good 39 and 52 no right there i'd take him out of there so, um, he's, as I said, he had five drafts, um, but he's only had four first round draft picks because of the Mac trade a couple of years ago, we gave two, um, uh, first round picks. So he's only actually had four, um, that he could do. But, um, so let's talk about a couple of his draft picks. Uh, a few years, what was it? I forgot to put down the, the, the year, but I'm almost certain that this is 2016 Kevin White. He was a wide receiver. Remember Kevin White? He was supposed to be the next coming. He only played 14 games with the Bears because he was always injured and he couldn't get over them. He just, to me, didn't seem like he really had his head all the way in the game. He caught 25 passes for 285 yards and he was cut in 2018. So, bust, big time. I mean, that guy, you know, he, I remember he'd catch a ball and we'd be like, oh, it's happening. And then he'd be injured after he catched the ball. So that was just terrible. And um, then the next pick, um, uh, that actually Kevin White might have been 15. And I apologize because if I'm going to do a show, I should really be prepared. So I'm going to say 15. Um, um, so me bad on that one. But you get the point. It was a bad pick. Next one was Leonard Floyd, linebacker, and he was picked in 2016, ninth overall, and the Bears traded up to get him. I believe they were a 13th, and they traded up to get him. And at times when Leonard was with us, he was pretty good. He had his moments, but he never lived up to the potential that the Bears and the organization and the Bears fans thought he could. He he just wasn't consistent enough, and he didn't turn out to be the pass rusher we wanted. We needed a solid pass rusher, right, and um, as a linebacker, because linebacker has been a problem. That's another thing. That's another, that's another show, because our linebackers, except for Rokon, it, are awful. I like Danny Trevason, but he's just old, and he just can't. He gets some good plays every once in a while, but he just can't get going fast enough. So Floyd was so inconsistent, so the Bears were like, you know what? We're not going to sign him. We're not going to sign him to a new contract. They ended up releasing him March uh, this year, 2020, and he ended up playing for the Rams. And when I watch Rams games, Kind of pisses me off because I hear his name called more than I ever did when he was playing with the Bears. So that kind of was an aggravation for me. <laughs> so clearly he didn't want to play with the Bears. So you know what? We'll give a pat. We'll give him a fifty-fifty uh, on that uh, pick. Then the next first-round pick was we all know Mitchell in two thousand seventeen. We all know about that. I don't really have to talk about that. Um, he went second. We traded up from third to second because um, Pace was so stupid. He believed, who was it, San Francisco? I can't believe it was right below us. But they were probably saying, oh, we're interested in Mitchell. And they were, Pace was so stupid, he, he bought a hook, line, and sinker. Ooh. And um, I heard that he never interviewed uh, Deshaun Watson. And if that's true, that's terrible. I mean, what the hell? 
Why wouldn't you interview him? See, they totally, you know what, from the scouts, like I've said, all the way down to the, the coach, well, coach wasn't there yet, um, Pace, they just really blew it. They didn't do their homework. They, they thought they were going to catch lightning in a bottle is what I think. And you know what, that's what Pace seems to be all about, you know, taking those dice and rolling them, you know, and, and being, you know, so, and, and it just doesn't work. And so we're not going to beat Mitchell up. We all know about that. Okay, so that was a bust because we could have had Watson or Mahomes. I would have rather have Mahomes. Then in 18, he did do a really good job with uh, Roquan Smith, our linebacker, as I said. Now, he was the best first-round pick, in my opinion, he made since he was there. Um, and, and, and Smith is just getting better each year, each game sometimes, except for the last game. He sucked in that game, too. Well, they all sucked. We know that. So, but Rokon is a good pick. I, I'm really, that one I'm happy with, and I love watching him, and he is just going to get better and better. So, but we need two more linebackers in the offseason, at least one to offset his talent, because one good linebacker out of the three ain't going to work. Although we did it, you know, well, even when, um, like Erlacher was there. We had guys, Hunter Hillmeyer and a few other guys that would play and were decent. So that's why we got away with it. But we need more because the two other guys, um, Danny and whoever they plug in every once in a while, ain't doing it. So, but good pick there. We like that. But now here are some where some of you people may disagree with me on this one. And, and, I, and you know, for the most part, all you guys, it's kind of nice with all the negativity that's happening out in the world this year. Um, I haven't really had fans writing me any negative stuff. So, you know, and, you know, they can. I mean, it's a free world. I can take it, but I'm really not in the mood for it. So I'm kind of glad we're all together. People who watch my show, we're all on the same page. But this one, might you might say, no. So back in 2016, there was a really good offensive tackle available when the Bears were picking. And, um... And he was supposed to be really, really good. And did I forget to write his name down? Oh, Lynn. I did. Oh, and I had it written down too. Um, but you guys can go look because you'll, you'll probably remember. I'm so bad. So he was available. And um, that would have been a great, great uh, pickup. But the, but the day before the NFL draft, there was a video that came out of him smoking pot the year before in 2015. Now, I'm sorry, but if that's the only reason you didn't pick them, I'd rather have my guy smoking pot than popping a lot of pills with liquor to get rid of the pain. These guys have pain. And I've seen interviews, documentaries and stuff like that, where the NFL players think pot should be legal because they said, what's really nice is you can smoke a joint, take a beer or two, and then you go to bed and you feel good. You don't have to pop those pills you get addicted to. So, you know, but whatever. So the Bears didn't pick him. Um, and um, Miami did. They drafted him. And then um, when his contract is up, he went to Houston. He has played 68 games. And he's pre they, and what I've been reading is um, he's played at a Pro Bowl caliber. Now, we certainly could have used him. And, again, I apologize. You're going to have to look up his name. Um, but a lot of people might remember that pot incident. I'm sorry. Well, I, I know a lot of people are going, nah, I wouldn't have taken them. But you know what? We've taken a lot worse than that. And you know what? We all know that. There's been a couple guys in, who've walked around with, you know, guns in and, and, and Illinois and getting busted in bars. So we all know we've had some shady guys. But this guy has not been in trouble once since he came in the NFL. He was a kid. He was in college, for Christ's sake. All of the guys smoked pot. He just got caught. See, that's the thing about the, the phones nowadays. See, when I was young, I'd have been in trouble all the time if, phone, if cell phones were available, but they weren't. Thank you. <laughs> so that's the problem. <coughs> um, so too bad because he would have been really good. 2018, we all know that Na uh, Pace signed Nagy. And uh, we thought, okay, here we go. So it started out great. In 2018, Mitchell started to play the full season. He played a little bit in 17 under John Fox. And <clears throat> Mitchell started to become coming into himself. You know, he still had a lot to learn. But 
we the Bears went 12 and 4 and went to the playoffs. As we know, they went and they played um the Eagles and we lost because of that stupid punter or place kicker of ours um Cody Parkey, but we're going to talk about him later too. So, um so we were were you not pumped for 2019? You're like, "Okay, First year there, he takes us to the playoffs. It's only going to get better, right? Because that's what it should have. But it did, man. In 2000, um, in 2019, we do know that when that season started, Mitchell walked out on the field and looked like a completely different quarterback. I don't know who he was, but it wasn't Mitchell Trubinsky from the year before. And we talked about it a million times, so I'm not going to um, um, say any more about how Nagy has screwed uh, Mitchell's head, but he did, and he's ruined him. So we're done with that. So, but the thing is, in 2018, I think that Nagy, he was still learning, so he kind of stuck, his schemes were more to the strength of his players on the team. So why didn't he learn that? In, 2000, or in 2019 and 2020, Nagy has stuck with his schemes, he didn't want to run the ball last year, and he didn't really want to run it this year, and he doesn't seem to be any wiggle room there. He wants to be the next Andy Reid, the next offensive guru. Well, it ain't going to happen. It's just not, because until he learns that he's got to go to the strength of the, of the players on his team, it's not going to happen. So in 2019 and 2020, our, D, our offense has been ranked 29th both seasons. I know the season isn't over, but I don't see the D offense going up anymore, but it could. So that's bad. Two seasons in a row ranked 29th. And I read this. They said his, his scheme seemed to be rigid, overly complicated and lacking imagination. Yeah, no shit. Especially the lacking imagination. I mean, my God, I can figure out what he's um going to do. So, um, Nagy was not a good choice. I, I get it because, you know, he wanted somebody young and this and that. And, and Nagy don't like to run. Andy Reid doesn't really like to run, but he's learned he's got to do it if he wants to win a Super Bowl. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So, it, it, and over the last couple of years, Pace has completely overlooked the offensive line, which we all know. So two years ago, Pace signed uh, a couple of our offensive linemen to long-term deals, Leto and Bobby Macy, Massey, to long-term deer deals. In 2018, he signed them. In 2019, it showed maybe it wasn't such a good idea, and maybe he should have been a little bit more patient and seen what happened. Between the injuries and the no talent, in 2009, it was our offensive line horrible as it is again this season, because he just completely ignored it. So I read something that they said in 2019, in the beginning of the season, Pace said, don't worry, we'll hire a new offensive line coach, and that'll solve our problems. Okay. Well, it didn't, moron. So maybe instead of throwing $70 million in the offseason to Quinn um, for a defensive line, um, who, in my opinion, was too old and um, slow. Why do you think Dallas let him go? They didn't resign him because they knew he was out of gas. So what does Pace do? He gives them seventy million and uh, and ignores the offensive line. If we took some of that money, we could have had probably two offensive linemen. They might not have been, you know, spectacular, but I bet they'd be better than what we got right now. I'm just saying. Okay, it's a thought. And I'm sure Quinn's going to be released after this year, which he freaking better be. Um, so in this this last draft in 2020, um, we know who he took first. But um, Pace could have taken two um, offensive players, a center and a guard. And the center, he was available, um, Lloyd... Kirsten Berry. He was a center. He went to Denver and has been playing very well. And then Damon Lewis is a guard. He's with the Seahawks. But Pace overlooked both of them. And I remember this because my son texted me and he was really, really pissed. And he overlooked them and took the tight end Comet. Now, do not get me wrong. I like Comet. I, I really do. I just, you know, the fact is we got Comet 
but we have no offensive line to block for the quarterback, so you can't use him. And Nagy don't use him anyways. And um, and my son's like, well, you know, because he's still learning bullshit. He should be out there. He went to Notre Dame. He's no dumb idiot. So if you were going to take Comment, then you better use him. But you should have gone after one of those guys in the offense in the draft this offseason. Hands down should have gone after one of those. And then worked on later rounds another tight end. Tight ends... I mean, if you can get a really good one and you have them a long time, they are they do help in the offensive line. I know that, but they're not an offensive lineman. And Nagy don't know what to do with Kamen anyway, so that was a busted. That was busted. Now for the biggest thing. When, Nag, when Pace came to the Bears, this is my favorite mistake I wrote, he did not re-sign Robbie Gold. Um, after the season of um, the off season of 2016, um, entering the season of 2016, so Gold went to the Giants, and then he ended up with San Francisco uh, 49ers, as you know. Gold right now is the Bears' all-time leading scorer. Robbie was with the Bears 10 years; he still should be with them, and his average was he averaged out to 10 years um, was 87 percent making the kicks. I take that every single time. Over a 10-year span? Hell yeah. And he had one down year the year before that um, Pace did not want to sign him. So he didn't want to get him what he was worth, give him the contract he wanted. It was well worth it, as you know now. There's a lot of reasons why. So Robbie went with the Giants next. And he didn't kick a lot um, because they weren't that good. But he was 100%. He never missed a kick that year. In 2016. Then he went to San Francisco from 2017 to 2020 now. In 2017, he was 95.12% accurate. 18, he was 97.6% accurate. And 19, he was a little off. Um, 40, or 40, 7419 You know, all kickers are going to have one season every once in a while. They're going to be just, and then up to date now, he's 88 Point eighty nine. Um, the Bears have had five kickers since we never signed gold. And I'm telling you, there were so many, you know what he, you know, we all know if he was our kicker, probably nine out of 10, he would have made that kick in 2018 in the San Francisco, in the uh, new, the Eagles <laughs> playoff game. Okay, so Robbie was in my, it, I have said it before, even almost more than Mitchell was more of a mistake because without an offensive line, there's two things you can't do. It, your passer is going to have a hell of a hard time passing and not getting sacked, and you give up two sacks, and you can't run the ball. So it is an extremely important position, and I'm spoiled because in the 80s and part of the 90s, we had great offensive linemen. I mean, just great. I'll have to show you a picture I have of the 85 Bears. I have a picture of the offensive line, and they're just awesome. So let's just, re I'll, I'll recap what happened after Robbie Gold. In 2016, we, we signed uh, Connor Berth. Um, he made 18 of, thir or 18 of 23 kicks. Um, 2017, he made 11 of 16 kicks, and then he was released uh, in 2017, week 11, because he had been missing kicks at the end there. Uh, so the Bears brought in, and I did not know this. You know what? You never know, right? Um, Carlos Santos, who's with us now. He came in um, in 2017 for week 12 um, because he had been released from Kansas City. He only had a chance to kick one week, and he was one for one. He, I mean, he was one for two because after that game, he got hurt. He was put on IR, and we never saw him again until 2020, and he's been rocking it so far. Then um, after he went on IR, we signed Mike Nugent um, for the last four games of the 2017 season. He made all four of his uh, field goals but missed the two extra points. So the next year, when they in 2018, when they started having um, bringing a million guys in, Mike didn't make the cut when in preseason, so he didn't come back. Then we all know in 2018 how Cody Parkey won that 
um, battle with all the guys they brought in? Don't know. But they brought him in. And his average was 76.67. And we know when he did miss him, it was always really important. There was one game, I think it was the Detroit game, where he missed like three or four extra points. Uh, um, field goals slash extra points. We ended up winning the game, but not with his help. And and then, of course, you know we lost the Eagles playoff game because of him. Who knows what we could have done? I'm not saying we would have won the Super Bowl that year, but we should have gone on because we were playing pretty darn well at that point. So that year he had 30 attempts and he made 23 of his kicks. He was released after that season, obviously, after the double dunk that Chris Collinsworth, asshole jerk, likes to keep bringing up. That is just so embarrassing. If I ever see Chris Collinsworth in person, I swear to God, I'm going to punch him right in the nose. Boom! I can't stand him. Then, in 2019, last year, Eddie Pinero, which we all know, and he picked up the pace. He, his average was 82.1. He had 28 attempts, and he made 23. He did come back for the season. They brought him back for 2020, but he was hurt in the offseason, in preseason, and he hasn't been off IR since. So we brought in Carlo Santos. And um, he is average. He's been doing really well. His average right now is 90% to date. He's, made, he's had 20 attempts and made 18. 20 attempts, made 18 of his kicks, Welcome back, Santos. We love you. Don't go nowhere. I also, so that is what happened after we released Robbie Gold. Now, just think about it if you did the math. Huge mistake, especially when I gave you all the numbers of what Robbie did. He had one down season, and it wasn't that bad because um, um, it was almost as the same as Cody Parkey last year. Um, and that was in 19. But he did re he's done really good, and he is just rocking it still. And uh, huge mistake pace. So for not re-signing Robbie, for the Mitchell mistake and ignoring the offensive line, he has got to be fired this year. He's had five years. He's You know what? We, we, he was another one. First time in, um, GM. We're not doing. I don't want to do that anymore. Bears. No more first time GMs and no more first time coaches. <sighs> and I also want to mention. I didn't really like the Howard uh, Jordan Howard trade two years. We got nothing for him two years ago. And I know we had Cohen Tariq was running really good. But wouldn't it have been really great last year to have Tariq and Howard? even though we had Montgomery. So you leave them, and then you can use them all because what happens if you get an injury? Hmm. Like we did this year, Cohen's out. It's only Montgomery and Patterson, but Patterson's not a running back, guys. He, he, he He's really pretty darn good because he does whatever we ask him to do, but he's not a, a true running back. So um, we could have really used Howard. And because um, Howard, the thing about Howard is, Cohen and Montgomery, although Montgomery has got a lot to learn, and if he can learn to really run over these people, then he's going to be a solid running back. Howard could run um, runner um, off defensive players um, down. He wasn't super fast, but if he got away, then he could take off. But he could get through them. Um, I just I thought that was a big, big, big mistake. I didn't think it was a good idea. So um, I think we should have kept him too. So. Pace, you know, he came from, he worked under um, the GM in New Orleans. So when the Bears hired him, and we had hired a consultant in 2015 or 2016, whenever, 2015, um, to help us find him. I remember I was pretty damn excited. I thought, wow, yeah, New, New, um, New Orleans is pretty dang good, and they've done pretty good. But you know what? He just, just because you work for him don't mean it. It, it rubs off. I really do think that that Pace is a dude like catching lightning in a bottle. He likes to roll the dice, and it hasn't worked for him. So it's time to go, and it's time to go now. 2020, let's face it, 2020, besides football, has been a crappy, crappy year. The only thing besides football that it's, it cheered me up this year was the White Sox. Now, I'm a White Sox fan. I know there's Cubs fans who probably watch this show, but I am a White Sox fan, and they are going to be good next year. And and just an FYI, I'll be doing a White Sox show next year too. So, anyways, um, 
So it's time to clean house. I don't think that cleaning house means we have to get rid of some of our um, people who are saying a bunch of defensive players to get a lot of picks. Like Hicks. Hicks is, what, 32 years old, 33 years old. You're not going to get any good draft picks for him. So if you can't get anything, if you can't get a second or third, which you're not going to get, then there's no point in trading him because he is at the end of his career, but he's been playing still well. He just gets hurt once in a while, but I don't think you're going to get enough for him. I say keep him. Now, Mac, I'm really torn on that one. If you could get a lot of draft picks, I might say yes because we do have to work on the – we need uh, offensive linemen, we need linebackers, and we need a quarterback. I, and not necessarily in that order, obviously. So, I don't know. We'll have to see. But I, this was my special show on why um, Pace and Nagy. I didn't really go into Nagy's, but I think telling you that we're 29th in offense of the last two years and Nagy wants to be an offensive guru ain't going to happen. I don't see it happening with the Bears. I don't see him changing. So it's time he goes. We need to get rid of Pace, Nagy. And something I hadn't thought about in a while, but maybe Ted Phillips. He's been with the Bears over 20 years. Maybe it's time he needs to go too. Because maybe we just need to clean all them all out, George McCaskey, and just start fresh again. Um because Phillips is the president, and, and you know what? I know he's probably making them a lot of money, and that's probably why they've kept him the last 20 years, but something's not working here. And I wanted to tell you, too, that I wrote George McCaskey a letter the other day. I have put it in the mail. It's my first of many. I will ma mail another one next week. I want another one the week after. And at the end of the letter, I said to him, your mother Virginia McCaskey is 97 years old. She was at the Packer game. I, I mentioned that. Come on. Doesn't she deserve another Super Bowl win? I say she does. And I'm old, and I want to take my son to the Super Bowl. I always told him because um, he wasn't alive in 85, and um, he was too young in 2006, and we weren't going to win that one anyways because I truly believe we didn't belong there. Um but I want to take them. So I've always told them, if we if we win, we're going to the Super Bowl, wherever it is. <laughs> Except for, the funny part now is, after finding out how much the average ticket price is to get a Super Bowl ticket, I told him, okay, but we can't actually go into the game. And he laughed after I told him, he's like, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the city, wherever the Super Bowl is, get a hotel room. You know, by then it'll probably be his wife because he's going to be married by then. So the three of us will go and we'll just go to the closest bar um, and party with all the Bears fans because they'll be there. And you know it'll be a blast. So come on, Bears. Please make that come true. And I have written Santa too and asked him for a quarterback and an offensive line. So, but Santa doesn't really listen to me. Um, and the football gods, well, you know they're men because they don't listen to me either. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't pray to God, God, because God, he's got a lot of stuff to do, especially after this year. But there's the football gods, that's different. So we can pray to them. So when you're praying to God, don't, don't pray to God, pray to the football gods. Because God's too busy. He doesn't need to be um, um, bothered with football, okay? I, I'm just telling you. So that's it. Um... And I'm sure you're, before you even turned the show on, you knew that we had to get rid of these two guys. You know it. But this just really cements it. And I and I just, just got into the tip of it. You know, I didn't go into all the draft picks because I can't. So, plus, I'm recording the game on today because there's a football game on Wednesday. Can you believe it? This COVID thing is just crazy, man. Um, do you know that out of all the teams, there's 32 teams out there, there's only one team that has not had one positive test since the season started. Only one team, Seattle Seahawks. I'll tell you what, I'm impressed by that because that means they all did what they're supposed to do. Didn't go out, aren't going to fast food, not going to strip clubs, not going to bars. They're, so that, I thought that was a little interesting. So, But, yeah, I'm going to go watch the game now because I'm recording it. So, I hope you enjoyed my show. I hope you, and it's, it was more of a fact show, so not a lot of funny, but let's face it. When you turn on the computer and you see this, it's got to bring a smile and make you laugh, right? 
So thanks again for all your support. I really do appreciate it. It is a heck of a lot of fun doing this show. Um, I will be on Friday. We're going to talk about uh, the Bears and the Lions because we play them on Sunday, both bad teams. So we'll see what happens. <coughs> and um, as I always say, love one another. Let's stick together. This year is almost over, and it'll be a new year for us, America, and the Chicago Bears. 2021, I cannot wait. And um, everybody stay healthy and safe. And you know what? I, as I always say, keep on rocking and rolling from Vegas, Berber. Okay, bye-bye, and thank you. Go Bears! <laughs>